just want to welcome those that are online. Um, we, you know, with the last couple months with COVID-19 going on, we've been really encouraging uh, our congregation to reach out through, uh, through, the, in, through the internet. And um, we've been reaching people all over the world. And so we want to continue to do that. So even as you're here, I want to encourage you, just get on and, and tell your, yeah, I see, you know, some people have their phones out. Yeah, wonderful. You know, just post on uh, Facebook, you know, like, share, and leave comments. Um, but make sure you turn off your ringers because we don't want <laughs> interruption uh, during the service. So we want to encourage you as well as those who are online uh, to do that. Uh, we also want to encourage if you uh, find that this is your church home and want to give, you can do that online as well. Go to our, our church website, ccfjacks.org uh, forward slash give. And we have a couple of different options there. You can uh, give and support the ministry. Uh, and again, I want to thank you all for your continual support over the last couple months. Even though you weren't here, many of you still uh, were uh, uh, sharing uh, in the ministry with your gifts. So I pray God bless you for that. Uh, on Wednesday night, we are still going through uh, Big God, Big Picture. We are looking getting an overview of the entire Bible. We just did Nehemiah. I want to encourage you, go back and listen to it. It was a wonderful study. I think you'll be blessed by it. And uh, today we are, well, normally we do the book of Acts, but I'm doing a, a prophecy update. I think with so many things just happening in the last, just really just a couple weeks, I think it's important for us to just look at current events in light of the Bible. And so um, I think that's it in the way of announcements. Uh, so uh, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to gather in your name with the body of Christ, the people who you have chosen to be called your own, the people who you have died for, shed in your blood that we may have a relationship with you, and Lord, that one day we will see you face to face. So Lord, as we study your word, Lord, again, we just ask that you open our eyes, our hearts, and give us the strength to obey what you're calling us to do. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, one of the things that I like to do is travel. One of the things I don't like to do is travel. And uh, for those of you who travel, well, you know, if you take a road trip, you get on the road, it's that long trip. And for I know men and women, you know, are different in this, in that, well, men, they like to get from point A to point B uh, the quickest way. Women, on the other hand, you know, like to stop, and when they see signs, they say, oh, look, it's, you know, uh, Georgia, you know, whatever fruit it is, you know, and uh, let's stop for some peaches, and let's stop here, and let's go to this store, and, and it's like, no, I don't want to do that. And so a couple years ago when we went to... Uh, to Washington, D.C., took the whole family up there, and, and it was an exciting trip, you know, we're going to Washington, and I planned it all out, you know, it's supposed to be an 11-hour trip, and I'm planning to make it in 10 hours, you know, because that's the type of person that I am, you know, use the restroom before we leave, we're going to take one bathroom break, you know, have all the food in the car, we're not stopping, but you see, while we're driving, when we get into Georgia, you know, you feel like, okay, we're accomplishing something. We're getting someplace. Then you get into the Carolinas, uh, South Carolina, and you're like, all right, we're getting closer. And, and in North Carolina, you get into Virginia, and you start seeing the signs. Well, Washington, D.C., you know, how many miles ahead? 500 miles, I don't know. But, you know, you start seeing signs and knowing that, well, we're getting closer and we're getting closer, and every, you know, so much distance, you, you see more and more of where we are, where, where we're planning to go and, and how close we are. Now, since I'm a planner and since I want to get there in the shortest distance of time, well, it kills me when now I miss the sign, I miss an exit, and it's like, oh, no, I have to turn around, and what was supposed to be 10 hours is now 10 hours and two minutes, you know, come on. <laughs> But you see, just like we saw signs, and just like every one of us sees signs when we're driving and traveling, listen, in the same way, Jesus says that when it comes to heaven, that we will see signs of his return. 
And we are in a day, a time and age where we're seeing sign after sign. And I'm wondering, when it comes to even the rapture, Jesus said that we are to be ready. And the question that I want to ask is, are we ready? And I feel and sense that in this world that we are, that we are not. Listen to what Jesus said. Matthew chapter 24, I should have told you this in advance. Matthew chapter 24, this is the chapter where Jesus is being asked about what to look for in his return. When he's about to return, what should we look for? What should the church look for? And, you know, uh, look at what Matthew chapter 24, um, verse 3 It says, now he has sat on the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Now, there's three questions that's being asked there, but I want to focus on the second one. What will be the sign of your coming? What would it be? What are we supposed to be looking for? Look at verse 4. Jesus is going to give some signs here of what to look for. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and, I will, and will deceive many. Underline deceive. Uh, you might even want to underline, I am the Christ. Uh, verse 6, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. You can underline wars and rumors of wars. That's a sign. And see that you are not troubled. Listen, that's even a sign. You can underline troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end, listen, is not yet. Verse 7, for nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. And there will be famines, which is a sign. Pestilence, which is another sign. And earthquakes in various places. Again, another sign. All these are the beginning the beginning of sorrows. As we look at these signs that Jesus uh, are talking about, and of course, when you read through the chapter, you see there's a lot of other things that he mentions. But I want to bring uh, attention to, well, he mentioned that there will be pestilence. Pestilence, well, uh, is really, you can put next to it, diseases. When we look at this disease, coronavirus, well, we can consider that to be a sign of Jesus' return. You say, well, Alan, there were many other signs uh, before, many other viruses before. Well, as we look at this sign, again, it's not just taking one sign, but looking at all of the signs together. In no other time in history are we seeing the signs all line up, and the frequency of those signs uh, are, are right in front of us. So we have the sign of, of pestilence. We have the signs of wars and rumors of wars. Well, some of you don't even know this, but we are at war. It's not a war with, with missiles and, and bullets and all of those things, but we are in a, an economic war with China. You know, not too long ago, uh, um, the president, he, uh, you know, stopped these trade agreements with, with uh, China and I don't know if you noticed this, but there's this battle that's going on where uh, China is trying to get back on top economically because we have, as a, as a nation, have pulled away so much of our financial support to them when we are buying so many of the, uh, the things from China. And so, therefore, with America being uh, pulling out, well, one of the things that China is doing is that they're blaming us for the COVID-19 and we are blaming them. You see, there's words that's being used and we don't even pick up on it, but really we are at war. And there's wars and rumors of wars. There are signs. These are signs of the return of Christ. But also, listen, Jesus talked about deception. Uh, I will read even in, in chapter 24, verse 24. It says, false Christ and false prophet will rise and show great signs and wonders and deceive, if possible, even the elect, even the believers, even Christians will be deceived from these signs, from this, these false Christs and false prophets. 
You say, you say, what false prophets? Well, oftentimes when we think about false prophets and false Christ, we think of someone who is coming in the name and saying, I am Jesus, and you need to listen to me. And that's often what we think about. But listen, if there's someone that's claiming to be a savior, not necessarily spiritually, but if someone is claiming to be the savior of the world, they are Christ. They are, they are a Messiah, a false Messiah, I would put, because there's only one Messiah, that's Jesus Christ. And so with all of the predictions and all those who will say that they, are, they have a solution for the world, and you say, well, who are those? Well, we'll talk a little bit about them. And they're, so they are false, uh, they are deceptions. And then also he talked about there's famines, which is another sign, uh, uh, food shortages. You say, well, are we in food shortages? Well, we know that the meat p uh, packing plants are closing down and, and there's a shortage. If you go into the grocery store, you see there's a limitation of meat that's available as well as other food shortages will happen and as time comes and as more, more and more people get laid off. And so again, we are in a time where we're starting to see famines. And not only here in America, our famine is a little different from the rest of the world because in many other countries, there really are food shortages, that people are starving to death. I don't know if you, some of you who are older remember back in the days in the 80s when Ethiopia had you know, those famines and you saw those pictures. Those things are still happening today. They're just not highlighted in the media anymore. So there will be famines and, of course, fear. Did, did you see what Jesus said? He said, see that you are not troubled. Do you know that we are living in a world, maybe you haven't seen it, but everyone is afraid. You notice that? People are afraid of, well, COVID-19. What's going to happen? Will this be the end of mankind? If this thing gets out of control, if we don't control it, what's going to happen to us? Well, for some, you know, many of the predictions that millions will die, which is a fearful thing. But again, I just want to underline, even though this is not my main point, but Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled. As believers, we're not supposed to be afraid, even though things can get out of control, even though, even if, if it's possible that some of us may even die from this disease, that we're not to be troubled. Why? Again, I, I always like to quote Hadassah. She said, you can't threaten me with heaven. To be absent from the body is to be present with God. And we are to have faith and trust that whether to live is Christ or to die is gain. And so no matter what happens in our world, that we know that our Savior, He wrote the beginning of the book, and He also wrote the end. And we are victorious in the end. We know that where we're going to be, we're going to be in a place where there's no more tears, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more disease, no more famine, no more. That's where we'll be. And so do not let your heart be troubled, but in reality, the world right now is filled with fear. So the world is a mess. We all know it. Uh, the world, uh, I believe, was not ready for COVID-19, and the world is not ready for even if another more deadly disease comes about, but the plans are to get ready. And so, who is going to save us from this pandemic? Who is going to save us from whether it's COVID-19 or something else? Who is going to save us even from economic disaster, which we are facing, with everything being shut down for the last couple months and everything slowly getting back uh, on, uh, on track? Listen, it's going to, we're going to see an economic uh, failure. You know, just listening to the headlines, and I've been just searching the headlines, listening to all of the headlines, reading headlines, you know, on a daily basis. And just one of them I heard is that because of the economic uh, stimulus that was given not too long ago, back in April, uh, one of the, 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 um, the things that they were hoping to accomplish as they gave businesses uh, some of this stimulus money is that they will keep their employees until, well, September 31st. Now, after September 31st, what's going to happen? Well, they don't, they're not obligated anymore to keep those employees. So October 1st, we can see a whole lot of people being unemployed even then. And so 
those who are studying economics, well, they're predicting uh, that things will get a lot worse before it gets better. Now, I don't want to sound like an alarmist or make you afraid. Again, that's not my goal here. But again, I want us to look at prophecy. What does all of this mean? As the, the question is being asked, who will save us from this, this disaster that we're, we're facing? Who will, fa who will save us? Now, if you do a little Googling, and I'm sure some of you have been doing that, and again, if you read some of the headlines, I personally began to wonder, was the pandemic, was this a pandemic or was it a plandemic? Now, I shared with you a, a couple weeks ago that back in February, February 10th, excuse me, February 17, 2010, that Bill Gates gave a TED Talk and it was titled, Innovating to Zero how he planned to reduce the Earth's population through vaccines. Now, those two words made no sense to me. I cannot put them together, vaccines uh, and, and population reduction. Uh, but there he went ahead and tried to explain how, uh, how it's important to do that. Now, that was back in February of 2010. Now, five years later, on April 3rd of 2015, he did another talk and it was called The Next Pandemic, and it was titled, again, The Next Pandemic, question mark, we are not ready, dot, dot, dot. And so back in 2015, he was preparing uh, the world, well, wanting to start to prepare the world for what he referred to as the next pandemic. Now, I want to share with you uh, something that I've heard from a, a Baptist pastor as he puts together a timeline, his name is uh, uh, Danny Jones, Pastor Danny Jones from North Lake Baptist Church, and he did this on April 19 of last month. And so he started by saying in 2017, this is the timeline, that Bill Gates created the CEPI, the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovation. So this is two years after he gave his TED Talk on uh, uh, We Are Not Ready. So he created this this. Uh, coalition, and it's a collaboration of several countries, agencies, uh, pharmaceutical companies, businesses, uh, and the goal is to develop a vaccine against emerging infectious disease and to prepare for the next epidemic. So that's in 2017. That same year, he began working on a Netflix movie called Pandemic. I'm sure some of you have seen it. In October of 2019, October 18 to be exact, uh, a pandemic exercise at John Hopkins University called Event 201. The exercise simulated a fictional coronavirus. And they predicted that the coronavirus will have the same kill rate as the Spanish flu of 1918, which killed 65 million worldwide in 18 months. And by the way, it's interesting that among those that were there in this uh, you know, event was Dr. Fugao, the director of the CDC, or the Chinese CDC. And, and so they said in this, uh, you know, exercise that the only way to solve this global problem is by having global businesses and governments working together. And I underline that word global because that's what we're heading towards, a global world, a global is no longer, you know, this country, this nation, but they're looking at a global world with a global uh, dictator, a global leader with a global economy and a global solution for everything that we're facing. And so they're encouraging this, uh, that all the world work together to deal with, again, this supposedly coming uh, pandemic. And so they talked about how it will affect the economy, uh, the travel, uh, it, how it will uh, affect our supplies, uh, and it, it, it talked about the importance 
of limiting internet shutdowns. In other words, what information is going to be released if they if the information or if anyone posts something on the internet that is disagreeing with what they want you to believe or to know, they will remove it, which we have been seeing in the past couple of weeks. You see, with this exercise, and you can go and look it up for yourself, I was blown away as they sat around in a round table with, with global leaders, uh, UPS uh, CEOs and, and Wyndham Hotel and all kinds of different people. By the way, again, this, the center of, of, of the CDC of the Chinese people, he, he was there as well among them. And they were telling about everything that will happen. And what we're seeing today is exactly what they predicted, which is amazing. Now, again, that's October 18, 2019. In November, 19, uh, November of 2019, the movie that Bill Gates was working on, Pandemic, it was released one month later. Now, the plot about this movie, if you haven't seen it, is about a coronavirus that was uh, originated in a market, a wet market in China, which will kill millions of people. This was in November of last year. Now, the World Military Games were being held that same week in Wuhan, China, where it had 10,000 athletes from around the world, from 110 countries from around the world, that was there the same week that this movie was being released. And the same time, right after, again, this whole world, ex this, this exercise, this pandemic exercise, and so all of this is happening one after the other. Now, when it come, came to January, January 24 to 25th, uh, there was a World Economic Forum gathering. And this gathering is basically for, and I will use this word, and you know I might get rebuked for it, but it's for the filthy rich. It's like a filthy rich man's club, where the, the superpowers of the world, they gather and, 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 and figure out how they can really in a sense, control the world. How they can, uh, you know, have world dominance. And so, when they gathered, Bill Gates, he announced a coronavirus, coronavirus vaccine program. Among them was the U.S. Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease. And of course, some of you are, have known or know this guy. His name is Tony Fauci, who, is, who has become uh, uh, the chief medical advisor to President Trump, he was among those that was in that place when Bill Gates announced this coronavirus vaccine program. Now, that was January 21st to 24th. They had this event. On January 24th, our U.S. House of Representatives began drafting the CARES Act, which is a $2.2 trillion stimulus bill that would be distributed in April. Now, at this time, most of us didn't even know what coronavirus was back in January. And it so happened that he announced uh, a coronavirus program that by the end of the 24th, here it is on the 24th, they're, they're planning for to stimulate the, 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 co the economy with this money. Now, on January, 20, January 30th, the World Health Organization, also known as WHO, launched the worldwide public health emergency for a novel coronavirus. Novel means that it's new. And so at that time, I believe it had only about 150 deaths worldwide. And so they're releasing this at the end of January. Now, January 31st, President Trump, he uh, issued a travel ban on China. There's no more traveling between China and America. So all of this happens in January. Now, when we look at in February, a month later, on February 28, Dr. Tony Fauci, he wrote in the New England Journal of Medicine, uh, the article was titled, COVID-19, Navigating the Unchartered. So in there, he wrote how COVID-19, uh, it won't be any different from really the seasonal flu. 
And, but to stop the spread, it still is an infectious disease. So to stop it, we will have to, of course, practice social distancing. And uh, he said that he will have a vaccine by the spring. So if you know anything about vaccines, it takes about between a year and a year and a half to find a vaccine and then to start doing trials. But here it is in February, February 28th, that he said that we should have something in the works by the spring. Now that was February 28th, February 11th, excuse me, March 11th now, the WHO, the World Health Organization, declared COVID-19 a pandemic. And Tony Fauci then went in front of the cameras and said that it will kill two millions if we do uh, nothing and 200,000 if we shut down the country. So if we do nothing, well, it's going to be a lot worse. If we do something, well, it's still going to be a lot of people that's going to die. And we have seen many who have died because of you know, COVID-19. But then he said on this now, this occasion in front of the cameras, he said it will take 12 to 18 months to get a vaccine ready for trial. And he, his, his predictions came from the University of Washington Institute of Health, um, Health Metrics and Evaluation, which is founded by, listen, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So that was March 11th. Now, March 14, the Associated Press wrote about how volunteers in Seattle were being given the COVID-19 vaccines. Now, how is it possible that it would take a year, over a year, to get a vaccine, but they were given it uh, two days later after Tony Fauci uh, said that uh, they will have a, a vaccine? On March 15, now, social distancing, of course, was starting to be enforced. That everyone is to, be, is, is to stay at home, uh, you know, stay away from people that's not your family. Everything started to go in lockdown. Now, on March 31st, Bill Gates said, listen, we acted too slowly. And he wrote about how we needed to shut down the U.S. economy for 10 weeks. Now, when you look at the timeline, you start to wonder, is this a pandemic or is it a plandemic? Is this something that they were thinking about of how they can get their ways and, 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 and get, you know, I mean, we can ask a lot of questions. Of course, it will just be speculation. But again, I have to ask the question, what is really going on? And are we paying attention or are we just going along with the flow and just doing what they tell us to do? What will happen if we shut down for 10 weeks? What will happen? Well, we're starting to see the effects. Well, the businesses, of course, are being closed. Churches are being closed. Local governments, I just read an article just here in Florida. Local governments are uh, talking about bankruptcy already and asking for stimulus money. Uh, the stock markets, well, we've seen how they have lost so much and, and they're predicting a, uh, even more losses. Um, in October, of course, for October 1st, so many will be, uh, you know, lose their jobs. For one example, the, um, the airline industry have lost over 90% of their businesses of their, you know, their customers, and um, they're saying that they're going to lay, lay off thousands of people. Uh, and the only way that it can ensure that people, uh, that they keep their, um, you know, keep, keep the airlines going is for mandatory vaccines. And so if people are feeling unsafe to get on a plane, well, to uh, have everyone vaccinated, then of course, you know, you're going to feel a little bit more safe and then people will start traveling again. So that's the only way that people will start traveling. So we have, you know, the stock markets, we have un unemployment will be on a rise. Uh, domestic abuse is on a rise that many doctors are saying people are coming in with, with bruises on their faces because, well, people are at home, they get into arguments and domestic violence is on a rise. We're hearing of 
uh, child molestation that's on the rise. Those things last forever when someone is molested. Uh, it affects them for the rest of their lives. We're seeing that depression and suicide is on the rise. We, we're seeing crimes. All of these things are on the rise because of what's going on. So we have thousands of people are, that are dying. We have our economy that's, gonna, that's failing. Um, and just this past week, they, uh, the Democrats, they proposed another $3.3 trillion of stimulus money. And in there, if you look at what's inside of it, there's a lot of money that's being sent to places that shouldn't be sent to. Uh, it have nothing to do with the pandemic. It have nothing to do with coronavirus. And so all of these things that's, that's happening behind the scenes, and, and all we as people want is, can we just get back to normal? Can someone just, you know, put an end to this? Can someone find a, 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 a vaccine? <laughs> well... What is the solution? I believe the solution is already being proposed, and I believe that many will, will receive or accept the solution. Now, what I'm about to share, you take it and you pray about it. Uh, don't listen to me. Don't listen to anyone. We are to be in a place of seeking the Lord for ourselves, because deception happens when, when we are not informed, when we're not learning. And don't even, let me even say this, if you see something on the internet, whether it's su supporting what I'm saying or supporting the other side, don't listen to anything un until you have verified it yourself. Go check it out yourself. Now, the solution, not only is that I see that Bill Gates was making predictions, of what will happen long before he, he's either a great prophet or, well, we see that in what Bill Gates did uh, in the plan, but we also see that, well, of course, he is planning to stop the coronavirus through vaccination and tracking. Now, you say, well, shouldn't he? Even, you know, he's given $100 million to, uh, to find a cure, and, and that sounds wonderful. But with that, he's also planning to track, uh, you know, each person, every single person on the face of the planet. That's what he's hoping will happen. And he's planning to use what is called a quantum, quantum dot, dot tattoo, which is applied to the skin by micro-needle patches to record vaccination. In other words, this tattoo, this micro, this quantum dot tattoo uh, will apply, be applied to the skin and it will record who's been vaccinated and who's not been vaccinated. Now, the tattoo, of course, will give a digital ID to every single person on the face of this planet. That's the hope. And the tattoo will provide, will be powered, excuse me, it will be powered by what is called a luciferous. In other words, when he implants it or when he tattoos it on people's skin, that it will be powered by something called a luciferous. Now, if you don't know what lucifer, <laughs> uh, so luciferese, it really, I, I mispronounce it, but Luciferese, if you don't know what Lucifer is, well, uh, according to as I looked up what Luciferese is, is it's a genetic, uh, excuse me, a generic term for the class of oxi oxidative enzymes that produce bioluminescence and is usually distinguished from a, proto -pro a photoprotein. The name was first used by Raphael Du Bois who invented the word luciferin or luciferase for the, for the substrate uh, and enzyme, uh, respectively. Both words are derived from the Latin word lucifer, meaning light bearer. So they're planning to put a tattoo on people that in your body, it produces this, this type of protein that produces this, this bioluminescence that will power this 
uh, this tattoo, which comes from, again, a word that's in the Greek is Lucifer. If you don't know what Lucifer is, that's the name of Satan. Satan names means light bearer. And that's why he was kicked out of heaven, because he was, and most believe, that he was a worship leader. And the worship that was supposed to be given to God, he wanted it himself. And he said, I will ascend on the throne above God. And he was kicked out of heaven. I, ve- I find it very interesting that the very tattoo that they want to implant will be powered by Luciferin. Now, Bill Gates... He has a plan, and it's called ID2020, where he wants to plant or it, uh, microchip every single person starting from this year. That's his plan. Now, there's also something else I want to point to, and some of you have seen it. Again, it's very interesting. I had to research it myself, a lot of reading, but... There is something that's going on right now. It's called digital currency, cryptocurrency. And there's a patent, a, 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 a pendant patent from uh, Microsoft. Again, Bill Gates is the founder of Microsoft or co-founder. Now, the patent is for cryptocurrency, and the, uh, someone assigned this number to it is the, the number that's assigned to it is W O twenty twenty zero six zero six zero six, and this cryptocurrency system is is used uh, is using body activity data. In other words, whatever it is that they're trying to patent, it will take your information from your body, transmit it to a sensor, which will be directed to a database so that you can, well, cryptocurrency, buy or sell? Well, we know, some of you who are familiar with the Bible, we know that the Antichrist will bring about uh, a a way that if you accept this mark, that you won't be able to, unless you accept it, you won't be able to buy or sell. And so in our bodies, if we have this tattoo, that which, again, tracks our health, but also tracks our currency. Is this coincidence? But it even gets even crazier. On March, excuse me, I believe it was March, May 1st, if I get which one, I have to go back, I didn't write it down. Either March 1st or May 1st, a House resolution bill was proposed, and this bill is labeled H.R. 6666. And it's proposed by Illinois Representative Bobby Rush, which he proposed $1 billion grant uh, program, and it will grant faith-based organizations, in other words, churches and synagogues and uh, and the likes, clinics and medical centers and other organizations which will perform testing for COVID-19 uh, for tracing uh, of those who are exposed to COVID-19. So in other words, this bill that's being proposed and, and, hope, and they're hoping that it will pass, that people will be tested for COVID-19. And if you read some of the language in there about tracing, and it really is called a tracing bill in a sense, because they want to trace everyone who have been exposed to COVID-19, and if you've been exposed to it, if you've been affected by it, and now someone, you're getting next to someone who is not, they're gonna start tracing every single person down to where you live and who's visiting you. Now, some of you may know our Constitution. I've been spending time reading it, and a lot of what I'm seeing And what's being proposed, they're infringing on our freedoms. And I believe it was, um, oh, the name just slipped my mind. But a person wrote, um, one of our former presidents, that if we 
give up our freedom in the name of protection, if we give up our liberty for protection, we deserve neither liberty nor protection. Now, what we're seeing in our world with so much fear and so much anxiety and so many things that's going to happen, that's happening, are we going to start giving up our freedom or more of our freedoms in hope that someone, some Savior, some Messiah will save us from everything? You know, the question that must be asked, is it possible that this sign, this, this, this tattoo, this mark, this, these things that we're reading and seeing, are these signs of the mark of the beast? Now, I can't st stand here and say, yes, it is for sure, because this, the mark of the beast will be given in the middle of the tribulation, but could this be, uh, you know, possible signs that's leading up to this mark? If you don't know what the mark of the beast, let's turn to Revelation chapter 9. I want to get to Revelation 13, but let's look at 9. In Revelation chapter 9, verse 15, the apostle John wrote, So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and the day and the month and the year were released to kill a third of mankind. In verse 18, it says, by these three plagues, again, what are the plagues? Diseases, such as a COVID-19. Uh, these three plagues are a third of mankind was killed. Look at verse 20. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons, and idols of gold, silver, brass, stones, and wood, which can neither see, nor hear, nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders, or their sorceries, underline sorceries, please, or their sexual immorality, or their thefts. You see that word, sorceries, in the original language, it's pharmakia where we get our word today, pharmaceuticals or pharmacists. You see, the Apostle John is saying in the future, during the time of the Great Tribulation, that people will not repent of their pharmacy or their drugs or even, can I say, their vaccines. You say, well, what's wrong with vaccines? You see, when plagues came upon this world in the past, where did people turn to? They turned to God. Where are we turning to? Well, where is the Savior? Not the Messiah of heaven, but we're turning to men. And instead of people flocking to the Lord, they're looking to, well, they're looking to medicine, they're looking to the experts, and whatever the experts say, that we will do. And so... I believe this, corona this coronavirus that we're seeing, I, I look at it as a, as a test run. I look at it as, well, this is not the big one. But as we look in Re Revelation chapter 9, we will see that there are three plagues that's going to come, that's going to wipe out, as it says here, a third of, the, the, of mankind. It's going to be even more devastating than mankind. Now, when I watch the videos the, uh, from their uh, planning for the coronavirus, at the end of it, it said, we failed. And in other words, they were saying, we failed, so what are we going to do for 2025 or 2030? You see, they're planning ahead for the next one. And the Lord is already telling us that there will be another one. Matter of fact, there will be three. And it will be more devastating. Now, look at chapter 13 this time, verse 11. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercised all authority over the first beast of his presence and caused the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, 
whose, whose deadly wound was healed. Verse 16 this time. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark of the name of the beast and the name of his name. Verse 18, here is wisdom. Let him who understands calculate the number of the beast for the number of the man, for the number of a man, his number is 666. Now when you see these bills and these patents that's being released and you have to question and wonder what's the connection you know, as I look around and hear that even like in South Florida, Broward, Dade, and, and Palm Beach County, and even other parts of the world where you cannot go into the stores to buy without a MASK on your face, that they will not allow you to come into the store. That means, you know, you cannot supply food, provide food for your family without having a mask. You see, there's one, one letter that you have to change from mask to make it a mark, M-A-R-K. And in the future, we are told that during this tribulation, there will be a mark that was, that's given of 666, and that without it, you will not be able to buy or sell. That means, well, when it comes to the Constitution, you know, even with a pandemic, the government have no right, based on the Constitution, to prevent you from being able to provide food for yourself or your, for your family. That's a violation of the Constitution. But here we have in Revelation that it says this, this, this Antichrist, this Savior, this false Messiah, he's going to force everyone out with the Constitution. You want to eat? Well, you have to accept this mark. Now, I want to close with this. Is COVID-19 a sign? Is the quantum dot tattoo a sign? Is the W O two O two O zero 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 six zero six zero six? Are those signs? Is the House Resolution six 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 six? Is that a sign? I want to submit to you that I know this may, might sound alarming, but I have good news. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ. All of these things that will happen in the future, we are exempt from it. Why is that? Well, I opened with the question, what is the sign of Jesus' return? Well, he gives signs, but he also it tells us that before he pours out his wrath on this world, that his church, those who he calls his own, will be raptured, taken out, removed. You can read about it uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. You can look at it in chapter 5. You can look at 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We can look at Revelations chapter 2. All of these things talk about the removal of the church before God pours out his wrath. So even as Bill Gates would ask and make the declaration that the COVID-19, coronavirus, the pandemic, we are not ready. I'm hoping that the church will be ready, not for what will happen so much with a COVID-19 or any other pandemic disease, but are we ready for the rapture? The signs are there. Are we ready? You know, I know we all want to get back to normal, but I don't want us to get so relaxed that we're not ready, that we're missing the signs, that we miss our exit. I want us to be ready. And not only do I want us to be ready, but I want, to, uh, want us to help others get ready. We, as a people, as a church, when you compare us today to the early church, the early church was ready for the return of Christ. That was 2,000 years ago. They were ready. You say, Ben, it's been a long time. Do you know Jesus said that 
that I am coming quickly. And, and, and again, people will criticize and say, well, it's been 2,000 years. He hasn't come quickly. That word for quickly means that when it starts, like a woman in birth pains, when that contraction starts, it happens suddenly. And I think all of us here was taken by surprise when March 15 came around and we heard that everything was being shut down. I remember Wednesday night, we were here having Bible study, and, and on the way home, I heard that the NBA was shutting down. That was the end of my world. <laughs> and I heard that the airlines were being shut down. And I started hearing of the, the country being shut down, and it was like, whoa, what's happening? You see, it happened suddenly. And can I propose to you so certain? So it will be with the return of Christ. It will happen suddenly. And as Jesus will say in Matthew chapter 24, one will be, uh, two women will be in the, in the fields grinding, uh, you know, and, and one will be taken and the other one will be left behind. It will happen suddenly. The question that I have to ask you, are you ready? Church, are you ready? Are you prepared for the return of Christ? I know everyone is nervous about coronavirus, but the truth of the matter is, at, one, at some point, whether it's coronavirus or cancer or some other heart disease, we all are going to face death at one time or another. But we need to be ready, and we are not to be afraid of death because, again, we go to be with our Savior. My hope is that He will take us out, <laughs> that we won't have to deal with any of this disease. But there's no guarantee of that because the, the Lord, again, said that the rain falls in unjust and unjust. I'm a realist. I'm not going to stand here and say, oh, you know what, we're the church and, 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 and you know, we won't get the, 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 the coronavirus or any other disease. I can't say that. I do know that he's going to come for us, and I, I'm hoping, and as we look at some of these prophecies, and there's so many other things I could have covered, but because of time, I, I will not. But there's so many other things that's lining up. If you read through Matthew 24, there's so many things that Jesus said that will happen or will, will, will show that his return is near. Just this past Thursday was Israel's uh, 72nd birthday when they became a nation again. Jesus again in Matthew 24 said, when you see this happening, that this generation, when that generation came back to be a nation again, Israel in 1948, that generation will not pass away before his return. We're, we're somewhere close. And again, I want to encourage the church, be ready. Are you rapture ready? Are your bags packed? <laughs> your spiritual backpack? You know, we can't take anything with us. The only thing we can take are souls. Let's pray. Father, we are indeed seeing signs of the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And while it is a, a scary times and fearful times, but in reality, Lord, it's exciting times because, Lord, more than anything in the world, we want to see the one who loves us dearly, the, the lover of our soul, the one who saw something in us, not that we had anything good in us, but really because of your grace, Lord, if I can rephrase that, because of your grace, you were willing to die for us. Lord, your word is clear that you desire that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so I want to, before I close and, and say amen, I want to just put this out here to you. You know, in the last couple months, we've been on lockdown. And I hope for us here at the church and even those who are listening online that that has been a time for examination. Who am I? Why am I here? What, what will happen if I were to die? Where would I be, heaven or hell? And hope this, these questions are some of the questions that you've been asking and examining in your own heart. And I'm hoping that every single person here can stand and say, you know what? I know where I'm going. I'm good with God. And if you're not good with God, if there's any uncertainty in your heart, listen, today is a day of salvation. Do not go another day, another moment without knowing for sure where you will be. 
So I want to give that opportunity for those of you who are here, as well as those who are listening online. The Bible said that we, we have all sinned. There's no one perfect. There's no one righteous. If we are to, to stand before a holy, righteous God in our own righteousness, our own self-righteousness, the Bible said we will be found guilty, and the penalty of that is death, separation from God in hell for eternity. And so I don't desire for anyone to go there. I don't even desire, desire it on my worst enemy. And so if you're here, I want to just ask you to stand. Just make a stand for the Lord. Make a stand. Make, your, make it right with Him. If you are watching online, you know, we can't see you, but stand in that place and say, Lord, I'm making a stand for you. I want to go to heaven. The Bible says if you confess Him as Lord, believe that God is raised from that, you will be saved. Is there anyone? And so if you have made that decision in your heart and you want to receive God's salvation, I want to pray this prayer and I want you to pray it as well. Say it from your mouth, but also from your heart. Mean it from your heart and God will honor it. If you pray this with me, Lord God, I've decided today to follow you, Jesus. Please forgive me. Wash me from my sins. I want to follow you all the days of my life. Help me to live for you. Help me to be on fire for you. Help me to be ready for your return. Lord, Forgive me and wash me with your blood. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you have prayed that prayer from your heart, listen, it says that God honors that and he writes your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, that if you are to die or he is to return before that, that you will have a place in heaven. That's his guarantee to us. That's his promise. So if you may have been here and you prayed that prayer, maybe too shy to stand up, I still want to encourage you, come forward. That I might pray with you. Victor and, and uh, Tim as well want to be here to pray with you, encourage you. And those of you who are watching online, I want to encourage you as well. Send us a, a message, whether it's from Facebook or on our website. Connect with us. We want to encourage you as well. And before I close with a final amen, I believe that in preparing for the return of Christ, uh, we have to start with our own hearts. And I, I feel and I sense that the church has been asleep, in a sense. That we've been just going through the motion. We come to church on Sunday, we sing a couple hallelujahs, and we go home and we continue to live just like everyone else. And if the world is to look at us, they won't be able to tell the, a difference between the world and the church. I want to say this, sin prevents God from working in His church, in your life. We're hoping to see miracles, we we're hoping to see breakthroughs, and we we're hoping to see God do a, a wonderful thing in our lives, but if there's sin in your life, the Bible said that we need to re repent, turn from our sins, and cry out to God, and He says that He will save us, He will deliver us. So if you're here and you need prayer, if you need encouragement, don't leave the same way. Don't leave the way that you came in here. Come, as the Bible said, the, the, the elders, they, the, uh, the, the, the disciples, the apostles, excuse me, they laid hands on people and they were delivered from all kinds of sickness and disease and, and a lot of those things really are rooted in sin. So I want to invite you for a prayer. So if we will stand um, as we close in song, but again, this is still a holy time. Let's, let's, let's uh, uh, obey the, the Lord as he has put it on our hearts. Let's do what he's calling us to do. Amen. God bless you guys.